Hello audience. We are four scientists talking in an important and shocking era. Many of the most exciting events in history of Earth and of life occurring during this era, which is the Proterozoic Era. The Proterozoic Eon is the most recent division of the Precambrian. It is also the longest geological eon, beginning 2.5 billion years ago and ending 541 million years ago. It accounts for a little less than four nights of geological time. During the Proterozoic Eon, modern plate tectonics became active, and the ancient cores of the continents moved over wide areas of the globe, accumulating smaller fragments of crust, and sometimes they collide together which, with other large land masses. North America nearly rifted through what is now the mid-section of about 1.1 billion years ago. This rifting appears to be to have stopped by counteracting the force of continental collision in what is now the east coast of the continent. Mountain ranges grew where land masses collided. Erosion of the mountain provi provided sediment to nearby basins and shallow seas. In addition, during this time, the first abundant fossils of living organisms appeared, mostly bacteria, anarchians, and eukaryotic cells. The Proterozoic is often divided into three things. The Proterozoic and the Neoproterozoic era. Now we are going to explain these eras. The Paloproterozoic. The Paloproterozoic era was in a time period from 2500 to 1600 million years ago. It's the first the eras of the Proterozoic eon, and it's the longest era of the Earth's geological history. More plain tectonics began with the Paleoproterozoic. This was the era of continental shoe formation. The Earth's action crust seems to have been both fragmented and somewhat unstable. The continental shoes were formed from small cratons. Cratons are the stable interior portion of the continent, characteristically composed of ancient crystalline basement rocks. It was during the Paleoproterozoic that most Iceland's of crust were first stitched together to create the continents we have nowadays. But this may be an overstatement since relatively broad islands of the Arctic stability are found in the rocks of northeastern Canada, Greenland, Western America, Western Australia, sorry, and South Africa. This became the nucleus of North America, Australia, and in part African continents. However, even in these cases the continental creation in its present form was the product of sultry cellular similar units. This ultimate process already occurred during the, during the Paleoproterozoic. In other cases, India, South America, and North China, both cross and shell were larger products of the Paleoproterozoic. These continental collisional belts are interpreted as having resulted from 2.0 slash 1.8 global scale collisional events that led to assembly of Paleomesoproterozoic supercontinent named Colombia or Luna. Now I'll be talking about the pa paleo atmosphere. Before the significant increase in the atmosphere, oxygen almost all the life existed was anaerobic. That is, the metabolism of life depends on a form of cellular respiration that did not require oxygen. Free oxygen in a large amount is toxic to most anaerobic bacteria. It is widely believed that the majority of the existing anaerobic life on Earth died off. The only life that remained was either resistant to oxi oxidizing and poisonous effects of the oxygen, or spent its life cycle in an oxygen-free environment. This main event is called the oxygen catastrophe. Now I'll be talking about the life forms of the pa Paleoproterozoic era. The crown of karyotes from which all modern days of chaotic lineage have arisen have been dated to the Paleoproterozoic era. By the latest common ancestors between the Xilade and Flaglade lineage probably diverged. The Fensivillian group and the Gardens fossils and the first Eurocleus also appeared during this time. Now I would like to talk about the Mesoproterozoic. It was a division of the geological timescale. It's the second geological era of the three that make up the Proterozoic Eon. Beginning 1.6 billion years ago, 
it ended one billion year ago. In this era, the maximum diversity and abundance of stromatoids formed by cyanobacteria are reached with a peak of about 1,300 million years ago. In the Mesoproterozoic, fossils also began to appear, such as Bangiomorpha. There is a Mesoproterozoic sample from Aura Saphir, which may have been the predecessor of the lineage that led to the fungi. Some of the major events in this timeline are the breakup of the Columbia supercontinent, the formation of the Rodinia supercontinent, and the evolution of the sexual reproduction. It was an era of apparently critical but still is poorly understood. Changes in the chemistry of the sea, the sediments of the earth, and the composition of the air. Ox of, of the air. Oxygen levels had risen to 1% approximately of today's levels uh, at the beginning of this era, and it continues rising throughout all this era. And lastly, the Neoproterozoic. The Neoproterozoic is a division of the geological time scale. That was the last geological era of the tree that make up the Proterozoic Eon. It began 1,000 million years ago and ended in and ended 542 million years ago. The, the nomenclature for this period has been somewhat unstable. The most extensive glaciation uh, known in the geological record occurred during the cryogenic period, also a period that subdivides the Neoproto the Neoprotozoic, uh, when the ice sheets possibly reached the equator and snowball Earth was formed. The first, fossil, the first fossils of multicellular life come from the Eddicarian period, including the first animals. At the beginning of the Neoproterozoic, we find the, sub, the supercontinent of Rodinia. At the end of this era, Rodinia began to divide by opening, by opening the ocean of Pantalassa into eight continents. Uh, the largest of them was Laurentia, proto uh, which was the nucleus of Rodinia. During the cryogenic, important glacial episodes developed, the starting of Berangerine, uh, which led to the first weird mass execution uh, documented in fossil record. Then these continents were united again to form Panosia. Gondwana appeared bordered by the Grand Insular Arc, uh, where the Iberian Peninsula was located. There was the marginal evolution uh, of the Andean type, which would be the Candomian Orogeny. Thank you girls for this section. See you on the next section.